Alright, so the next several buttons here along our main toolbar are very specific. They include allow translucent selection, toggle brush polygons, lock prefabs from selection, enable or disable socket snapping, and particle system using LODs in the perspective viewport, which is a really long tooltip. Now, what I'm going to do is give you a demonstration of each one of these using VCTF Sandstorm. So if you'd like, you can go ahead and go to File and open that up. Now, the first one, which is toggling translucent selection, I'm going to demonstrate this by coming over here underneath this little bridge covered area, and I'm going to open up the content browser. Now, here inside the content browser, let's do a very particular search. So make sure you've clicked the All Assets button, and then here inside the search line for your filter, Let's do a couple of things. First off, let's search for light. And then let's narrow this down by clicking on only static meshes. So check little static mesh checkbox. If you scroll down here to the bottom, you're going to see a couple of volumetric static meshes, kind of for spotlights and volumetric lighting. Grab either one of these two. It doesn't really matter which one. I'm going to grab the little skinny one on the right-hand side. I'm going to slide my content browser off to the right, so it's mostly off the screen but just so I can see the underside of this bridge. Then I'll just drag this little light mesh right here to the underside of the bridge, and boom, there you go. We get a nice little volumetric light effect, which doesn't have a light source right now. This is just here kind of as a demonstration. Now let's close this. Now currently I have my scale widget available. If you don't have that available, tap the space bar until it cycles around, so boom, there you go. That's what you want. Now. I'm going to scale this up. It looks kind of like uh, something that should be coming out of the underside of an alien ship when you scale it up like that. Now what I want you to do is make sure that allow translucent selection is off. And then I want you to click right here in this light source and see what we get. You'll notice that we're actually selecting the static mesh on the far side of that volumetric light. Now if we switch it on, I'm actually selecting the light cone itself. So it's really just a question of do you want to be able to select volumetric effects or translucent objects like this volumetric light cone. So that one's pretty easy and it's very specialized. You're not always going to need it, but man, when you need it, it's very, very handy. Now next, we have toggle brush polygons. If I fly out here to these great big blocking volumes that kind of surround our level, if I select one of these, you'll notice that right now all we really get is the wireframe of that brush, but if I switch on toggle brush polygons, the polys of that brush will become shaded in, which can make it just a little bit easier to see what's going on. Now, moving across, we have lock prefabs from selection. To really drive this home and make it make sense, we need to create a prefab. So I'm going to do a couple of things. I'm going to tap the O key, which will get rid of any volumes in our level just so that they're not visible. It just keeps those blocking volumes from kind of cluttering up our view. Now, let's take a look at this cool, kind of almost Grim Reaper-ish sort of character, this statue you will notice that he's actually made of several different static meshes. So there's like this wing, there's the statue itself, there are these hoses that are hanging down. I'm just holding down control and clicking on each one of these. We also have the pedestal down here at the bottom. Now, let's say, just for the sake of argument, that we wanted all of these objects to be considered as a single object for placement, uh, if we wanted to move them around, make duplicates of them, and so on and so forth. We can create a prefab of these objects. So what I'm going to do is right-click, and come down to Create Prefab. Now it's going to ask for some information. It wants to know what package to save this in, so I'm going to make just kind of a temporary package. We'll call this temp underscore prefab package, which I'll just get rid of later. For the group, we'll just say prefabs. And for the name, we'll do cool Grim Reaper statue. There we go. Now, we click OK, and we're going to get another message that says, Would you like to replace these actors with an instance of the new prefab? Why, yes, yes, I would. So we click Yes. Our static meshes are now gone, and we now have a prefab. So now, we, if we select any one of these, currently we can actually still select the static meshes. If we click Lock Prefabs from Selection, however, selecting any one of these objects will select all of them simultaneously. So it's just a question of whether or not you want to be able to select the individual parts of a prefab or the entire prefab as a whole. Now, if we switch out of game mode, and if I navigate here inside the base of this mesh, we also get a little prefab icon. Even if we don't have lock prefabs from selection on, we can always grab the entire prefab by grabbing this icon. 
So just keep that in mind. Now, next to this, we have enable or disable socket snapping. And this is a really cool one. Very handy once you know that it's there and how to use it. I'm going to come down here to this little shaded area just because it's a little easier to see. And let's see here. I'm going to tap the O key to get rid of those volumes again. And let's come over to our content browser. This time, I'm going to clear out everything in my search line. So just go ahead and click the clear button. Make sure, again, that you are looking within all assets. And I want you to click the Skeletal Meshes checkbox. Now, this will give you a big list of all the skeletal meshes included with UDK. Let's grab the SKCH Iron Guard Male A Skeletal Mesh. So let's just select this guy. And let's just drag and drop him right here onto the ground. Now, when he comes in, by default, he's kind of sticking halfway through the ground. So I'm going to tap spacebar to get my translation widget. And we'll pick him up into the air. He doesn't necessarily have to be sitting right on the ground. I mean, if he's hovering right above it, that's okay. No big deal. Now, let's say we wanted to give this guy a gun. He, let's say he's a skeletal mesh that we're going to be animating in matinee. But for our animation, he has to be holding a weapon. Well, here's the thing. A weapon, in this case, let's just pick on a shock rifle. So here's our shock rifle. It's SKWP Shock Rifle 3P. And the 3P stands for third person. You don't want to use the first person model. So I'll grab the 3P version, and I'm just going to drag that onto the ground right next to our guy. How do we get our skeletal mesh, this guy, to hold on to the shock rifle? You could spend a while trying to position and get things lined up, but then you need to attach it, and there's a lot of different steps you'd have to take. Fortunately, socket snapping deals with the problem for us. If we switch on socket snapping, all of the sockets of our skeletal meshes suddenly become active. All we have to do is select our shock rifle, and then click where we want it to go. So let's click on the socket right here next to our little guy's right hand, and boom, check it out. The shock rifle jumps right into his hand. It's already attached, and if we were to animate this skeletal mesh at this point, the shock rifle would move along as if he were actually holding it. So it's a real quick and easy way to deal with the problem of getting an, a character to have some object attached to a socket. Now, the last one of these little specialized buttons is the select to have particle system use distance LOD in the perspective viewport. That's a really awesomely long tooltip. Now, to show this off, I'm going to fly the camera way out here into this little kind of no man's land where players aren't supposed to go. Now, let's go back into the content browser. Let's go ahead and clear out all of our search criteria and make sure we are searching for all assets. So click the all assets button. And I want you to search for particle systems. So check the particle systems box. Then in the search line, I want you to type in something very particular. Type in shock, which is for shock rifle. And I want you to grab the P underscore WP underscore shock rifle underscore ball particle system. I'm going to take this guy and just drag and drop him right here onto this kind of slanted piece of ground. Now he's kind of sticking halfway through the ground, which is no fun whatsoever. So using the translation widget, I'll just pick him up a little bit. Now there's all sorts of stuff kind of getting in the way of us really being able to see this guy. So I'm going to make sure we are in game mode, which will kind of get some of the icons out of the way. Also though, I'm going to switch on real time, which gives us the kind of animated effect. Now back in the content browser, real quick, if we double click on this particle system, we get Unreal Cascade, which I'm not going to talk about too much right here. Save at the very top, we have these controls that look kind of like controls on a DVD player for you know jumping and fast-forwarding, skipping to different chapters. These allow us to cycle through our different levels of detail. We also have a preview window here on the right. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to walk you through it. I'm going to use the right mouse button here inside the preview window and drag forward to get us really close to this particle system. Up here inside the toolbar... There's a button over on the right-hand side labeled Jump to Lower LOD Level. If I click on that, it takes us to the lower LOD level. LOD levels, uh, LOD is short for Level of Detail. This allows us to simplify our particle system if we're really far away from it. And in this particular case, if I jump back, we have our high-detailed version. And if we're really far away, we don't really necessarily need to see a lot of these extra effects. So we have a simpler version that will just keep things nice and uh, easily calculable if we're really far away. So let's close out Cascade. I just wanted to show off that we do have two levels of detail on that particle system, and we'll close the content browser. Now, what I'm going to do is put us right on top of this particle system. In fact, let me slow down my camera real quick. And if we look right on top of this guy, we can actually see the high-res version. Now, I just switched on 
the select to have particle system use LODs in the perspective viewport button. Now, check this out. I'm holding down the right mouse button, and I'm going to fly us away from this guy. So we're really far away. He's just kind of a speck in the distance. Now I'm going to zoom back in, still holding the right mouse button. I'm going to press the C key. See? He's lost those little dark rings. As I start to move closer to him, boom, you see him pop right into existence, and then pop out. There you go. So it's just a way that you can preview those levels of detail. So very, very handy. Also shows a, a nice way to use the zoom feature on your camera as well. So that's a quick walk through the allow translucent selection, toggle brush polygons, lock prefabs from selection, enable and disable, excuse me, enable and disable socket snapping, and then finally our particle system LOD preview button. So that's going to wrap things up for this video. Thanks a lot.